Before we start today's episode, I would like to take a moment to tell you about a great deal being offered by my friend and master guitar instructor, Joe Elliott. Joe taught at the GIT in Hollywood for 23 years, where he was the VP of Education, and has recently been working with six-time Grammy winner David Sanborn. Over the past few years, Joe developed an amazing guitar program called Fretboard Biology. If you have been listening to the Guitar Speak podcast, I'm sure you've heard me mention Fretboard Biology before. At the moment, Joe is running a special deal where you can get three months of comprehensive guitar training for only $29. So head over to Fretboard Biology using the link in the show notes to get started. Whether you are an intermediate or advanced player, it really is worth checking out. Here's a few words from Joe about the course. If you're tired of wading through hundreds of random guitar videos and just want to become a better player, Fretboard Biology is your answer. Fretboard Biology is a self-paced, college-level program that will give you the right instruction, in the right amounts, and in the right order. You'll learn the same information I taught to thousands of other guitar players over 30 years of teaching in top music colleges. If you want to make real progress with your guitar playing, then sign up for a free 7-day trial at fretboardbiology.com. Hi there, you are listening to the Guitar Speak podcast. My name is Matt Wakeling, and this is the show that I produce in Sydney, Australia. It's been running since 2016, and usually on the show we have deep dive interviews, sometimes gear reviews, and for the last few years it's been so fun doing these round table discussions with my very good friends, Gabor Jessica. Ahoy, hoy. And Rob Rhodes. Ahoo, hoo. <laughs> in the... <laughs> It's always good. In the Iconic series. So uh, if you're new to the show, we started out doing Iconic albums, talking about guitar records we really loved. And since then, we've kind of morphed out into lots of different uh, guitar-themed shows. So we've talked about guitars in the movies, Gibson oddball guitars, you name it. And uh, I think this is our second year running. We're doing the year in review. So we're going to have the Iconic 2023 in review. Fellas, it's been an exciting guitar year. It's been a good year of making fun podcasts with you guys as well. Thank you again for squeezing one more show in before the end of the year. That's all right. My pleasure. It's been a particularly good year for you two and Fender. (laughs) This is true. We might might get to that. Our good friends at Fender, who are not sponsoring this show, but but could be. We still love them lots and lots. (laughs) That is very true. Very true. All right. We, this is just going to be pretty rapid fire, stream of consciousness. Ooh. That sounds pretty trippy. Dangerous. So uh, strap yourselves in. <laughs> okay, we'll just jump straight in. Favorite album or and or song of the year and or cool <laughs> album you discovered this year? Because sometimes we discover stuff and it's yeah. not within the calendar year. But anyway, um, Rob, kick us off. This is a tough one and... Uh Regular listeners would know how much of a Nuno fan I am, and you guys know. But I didn't yeah. pick Extreme. I thought six. you were going to. I knew. I, I had a feeling you were going to pick. I extreme. didn't ah. pick it, but it got a. It's a seriously <laughs> like well honourable mention. But I'm going to give it my album of the year um, is Paramore's "This Is Why." Ah, um, very cool. I, like from the moment that first single dropped, I was hooked. And it's a great record. I wouldn't say, like, I, wouldn't, I don't love every track every day. There's obviously a lot of mood um, in that, in on that album. But, uh, yeah, I, I love that album. I, I just, uh, I saw him live last week uh, oh, at the Brisbane right. Entertainment Centre. And maybe one of the best video lighting shows I've ever seen. Oh, cool. Um, nice. Integrating, you know, stage, I don't know what you would call it, like there was a big stage prop that moved and morphed on stage, um, incorporating lights and, yeah, even confetti guns and pyrotechnics, kind of had everything. And uh, Haley's just brilliant live, you know, I... I wanted to see her sing live, and she did not disappoint. It Very was, energetic. Cool. She's amazing. I've seen. I've just seen some concerts, you know, on on, on YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she seems like someone who's very, very energetic on stage. 
She has been to the detriment to... She's had some neck issues and uh. over the years, but she was still headbanging away. And But, uh, yeah, this is why. Great song as well, the title track, um, the news. Uh, there's just... Yeah, I think the first six tracks, maybe seven, are untouchable. They're great. And uh, is it Zach Taylor? Mm -hmm. no? Yeah, he... I think... I I went with a friend of mine, Michael Jeeves, and I said to him, I think more than any guitar player, I listen to what he does, and I it doesn't make sense to me. Well, there's, I, there's the two, there's the other guy too, the guy from what's that band? English band, I think it is. An, is it English band? The other guy, the he's got the guy with the afro now, the afro guy. Oh, big, okay, he I'm was. Gonna... What was the band? He was in that band. Um, he was in another well-known band. Okay, I've got to look that up. Talk, talk, All talk, right. talk. But yeah, he, well, obviously on the record he does. Um, Zach plays everything. I think it's just right. you know, and um, but I think n the most original kind of chords I've heard in pop music since Jeff Buckley. Like when you listen wow. to what he does on Grace, and then you listen to what Zach does on this album, very very similar like chords and voicings and. Yeah, you just sit there and, you know, you listen to music and you can kind of, oh, yeah, I can tell what they're doing. But there's just some weird stuff on this record that just peaks my ear and I go, wow, that's interesting. Really? Nice. When I Rob. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What's sorry, it? Rob. I was just going to ask, with Paramore, I don't know heaps about them. The stuff I've heard I've liked yeah. for sure. Is the lineup different from the original? Like, was there Does yeah, a few lineup changes? changes? So the the... The short, the short of it is that Hayley Williams basically was the one who got signed. Yeah, okay. but she said she wouldn't sign unless they, you know, signed her as the band Paramore. She didn't want to be Hayley Williams. She wanted to be okay. Paramore. And yep. there've been numerous lineup changes, but the original drummer and the original guitar player are still there. Oh, okay. The but, original drummer too, I think. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, sorry, I yeah, missed yeah. that. I'm just He's trying scrolling. to find the guy. He's scrolling, scrolling to Wikipedia. Find the guy. <laughs> I'm trying to find the guy's um, name. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, the three of them are still original. They came back for the, I think, two albums ago for the self-titled record. Okay. And okay. they've been back since um, Hard Times and now this album. So three, they've been back for that. But, yeah, and nice. they are transformed as a band. I think it's six albums for them too at this point. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Riot and then go through, is it Brand New Eyes? Um, yeah, and th th each record is very different. On the first few, kind of, you can run a line through them, but pretty much from then on, the last three records have been very, very different to one another, let alone different to the earlier albums. So, okay. yeah, that's... Paramore's This Is Why, again, Nice. I only really considered records that I bought physical copies of. Yeah, okay. That's kind of how I judged it. I went, if I was good nice. enough to buy on vinyl uh, this year, then, yeah, I would get it. I would consider it for album of the year. But even if I didn't, I think Paramore's This Is Why would be my album of the year. Cool, very cool. Good boy, you still digging around? Yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. I'm pretty sure the other guy, the Afro guy, was in another band that was quite well known. But yeah, I, don't, I don't recognize him. Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. But yeah, I love the, the interplay between the two guitars. I actually, the um, um, I, I I did write that album down as one of the albums of mine, but oh. I thought maybe you were going to pick it, so I picked another one too. But yeah, I wrote down um, my favorite two tracks. Probably this is why I'm running out of time. Um, yeah, but it's a great, really, really good album. Actually, excellent album. Yeah, I'm a cool. big fan. Nice. And what what else do you have, Gabor? Me? Yeah. Well, the other, well, uh, okay. Um, I kind of split mine into three. <laughs> As <laughs> sure. always, why not? Why make it easy when you can make it complicated? Um, <laughs> so I had my favorite album released in 2023. My favorite band or album I found in 2023 that may not yes, necessarily have been from 2023. And my favorite re-released album, or reissued re-released album in sure. 2023. Uh, so which one do you want to go? Away. Which one do you want to go first? Uh, favorite album released in 2023. Released. Okay. Well, I had Paramore. This is why too. 
Um, I looked through my, my Apple Music list. The only other album that I had from 2023 is uh, Blur, The Ballad of Darren. Uh, oh, okay. And it's a great album. And it's another... Uh, I actually really quite enjoy that album. Um, it's it's maybe a bit more low-key than some other um, Blur stuff. But there's still sure. a couple of great tracks where um, Graham Coxon does this kind of... Is it in tune? Is it out of tune? I don't know, but it sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Melodic stuff with some weird fuzzes and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, the two that I wrote down, um, um, th- or three that I wrote down, The Ballad, the first track, it's a great song. Uh, St. Charles Square, that's one of those ones with lots of fuzz and... Is it a right note? Isn't it a right note? You be the you be the judge. Mm-hmm. And Russian strings, that's another one. I don't know. Have either of you heard the Blur album? No. No. I really like it. I think it's really quite good. I'm a Blur fan, though, so as you can yeah, tell well, from the um, Britpop episode, yes. uh, why not? Uh, yes. Now over the holidays, why not go back and listen to one of those episodes mm. and check it out? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, links in the show notes. <laughs> Okay, very cool. So that was your 2023. But the Paramore record was your I had that too, yeah, because I, that, that, I really, really liked that album. That's a really, really good album. Um, been listening to Hard Times a lot before that. Before that. Um, my kids uh-huh. actually really like Hard Times as well. Yeah, I, could, um, I can hear how that would be. That's yeah. a, an album they really, really like. Uh, but, yeah, I, it's, I really love the interplay between the two guitars on that album. The really yeah, weird nice. rhythmic stuff that they're doing. Great drumming too. Um, and great singing on top of it. Is that so. album called After Laughter? Not After Hard Laughter, Times? yeah, yeah, not Hard, yeah. Hard Times is, a, is oh, a track. I said that earlier, yeah, yeah. Hard Times is, is a track, a, yeah. yeah, the title track, the, the first track, but um, After Laughter, that's For right. the people that are yelling at us yeah, yeah. while they're listening. <laughs> I'll send the cloud. <laughs> uh, correct it. Um, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So that was my, right, my, my released in 2023. Do you want to do yours or do you want me to do the other two sections? Um, keep going. We're on a roll. What, what, who did you discover this okay. year? Okay. I discovered a new band. Um, and actually, the album was released last year that I am that I really like. But uh, it's a band from Taiwan called Elephant uh-huh. Gym. Yeah, Elephant Gym. I like it already. Yeah. Oh, I think you would like it, actually. Um, they're considered... Okay, this is from Wikipedia. They're considered math, rock, jazz, funk, fusion band... Sure. So slash lots of slashes from Taiwan. <laughs> it's a brother and sister team, uh, Tell and KT Chang. Tell uh, plays guitar, the brother. KT plays bass, the the sister, and drummer Chia Chin Tu. Uh, my apologies t- for pronunciation. Um, uh, it's a, a killer band, really really cool band. Um, the bass player, the the girl KT Chang. She does a lot of slapping and a lot of uh-huh. weird, quite intricate sort of playing, like almost Primus esque. But and okay. then she sings as well, and it but it sort of has jazz influences, funk influences, math rock influences. It goes all over the place. Some hip hoppy kind of stuff as well. Um, it says on their website the word elephant in the name symbolizes the bass heavy sound, and Jim refers to the agile and irregular rhythms. That's how okay. they came up with the name. Very good. I like it. Um, so, on a scale of zero to bungle, where would they sit? <laughs> well, it's not quite bungle, but maybe it's a, it's a, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's two thirds of the way there. Check it out. Yeah, um, the album is Dreams that they released last year. Great album, and some. If you watch some live stuff, she's a, she's a beast on the bass. Um, she's great. Very little girl, and the, I think she plays a jazz bass. Looks very big on her. <laughs> But she mm-hmm. plays it really, really well. And lots of slapping, lots of quite intricate stuff she does. Good drummer, awesome. too. So check out Elephant Gym. Have either of you ever heard of Elephant Gym? Nope. On the way home tonight, Rob? Because Rob's <laughs> we're in the same room again. Um, <laughs> yes. On the way home tonight, Rob. Elephant Gym. Check it out. Okay. Great band. And you, Matt, <laughs> on the way from where you are now to bed, Elephant Gym. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and I think they've got a new album coming out early next year. Okay. I think they'd already dropped the first single. Good call. So, yeah, I, I love hearing about all this new stuff. And from Taiwan, too. I've, I don't think I've ever heard any other music from Taiwan. So, something different. Nice. And the nice. best re-released, just yep. to for the trifecta, um, yeah. this year was the 25th anniversary, which makes me feel very old, of Portishead 
Roseland, New York City, the live oh, at Roseland, um, nice. and they re-released it, remastered it for the <laughs> the streaming world, um, which is kind of sad that they that it's remastered for the streaming world, mm. but it is remastered for the streaming world. When everyone seems to be going the other way, the other way, yeah, for vinyl. Well, it, it's it's they re-released it on vinyl as well, so yeah. you can buy it on vinyl. But they did a special remaster, so it works. Better maybe for the lossless and yeah, moss. yeah, and and six times as loud. Um, and they also added two previously unreleased songs that they they recorded and they filmed while they were doing the live concert, but it, they were never released. Undenied and numb. Okay, and um, it's a great. It's it's I think one of my favorite. Did I mention it as one of my favorite live albums when we did the live albums thing? You did. I think you I did. did. You meant it was it was in our live albums. It's a killer so, yeah. live album with a with a uh, I think forty eight piece band or something like that, like, as in um, orchestra, uh, New York Philharmonic or something like that. They're, they're doing it. Yeah, um, right. With like trumpets, horn section, strings, all that stuff. Um, great, great, great album. And Portishead. It's just I always have time for Portishead. It's one of those bands. I never get sick of Portishead. I, you nice. might feel different there, Rob, but no, I had I had moments with Portishead with the uh, when I was a kid. When you were, oh, jeez. <laughs> it was mostly my girlfriend, my longtime girlfriend at the time. Oh, so, oh okay. So, so it was, yeah, it was in. It was part of that soundtrack. Long term girl, girlfriend gotcha. memory. Sorry, apologize. Take it back. <laughs> Erase hey, it from the podcast. <laughs> you don't need to apologize. Tomorrow is my wife and I's twenty first anniversary. Oh, well, congratulations! So, no way. Congratulations! Yeah. congratulations and I'm man. on the That's Sunshine awesome. Coast with Gabor. Yeah. Well, so. where else would you want to be? <laughs> well, how else would you? Where celebrate? else? Where else would you want to celebrate your twenty first wedding anniversary than with some tall, pale guy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats! Either way, that's awesome, oh, man. Amazing. That's cool. Um, yeah, our live, our favorite live albums. I'll add that uh, link to that. See, see, see what it did there. See what it did. The 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 favorite live there's albums. Some, the favorite. This is supposed some to very say good. add it here. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm, <laughs> pointing the, I'm pointing <laughs> to the I'm pointing to the screen. top right corner of the screen now, here. but which doesn't work what? when you watch YouTube on the app on your smart TV. Yeah. Uh, no, okay, it doesn't. Yeah. It's just someone pointing at the sky. Yeah, I always wonder if anyone's done a study yet of how many times the YouTuber pointing at the link actually correlates with where the link is. That's uh, that's academic research for the new generation, surely. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Rob, did you have any... <laughs> Rob, did you have any other new releases this year? So Paramore, the Extreme, got a yeah honourable mention. Um, no, re-release uh, Baby Animals, Shaved and Dangerous, got a oh, nice. got a remastering yeah. on vinyl, and I got that. And oh, I cool. think I mentioned it last year, but the Noiseworks album finally, the vinyl finally dropped to I think ten oh, okay, ten months nice. late or something. But that yep. was another vinyl. And the Van Halen remastered Sammy Hagar box set as well dropped just a month oh. ago. So, But they yeah, still didn't cool. they didn't lift the level of OU812, which is very disappointing. So they remixed oh, it, really? but they didn't master it louder. Like, still quieter than all the other albums. Bastards. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, but no, I couldn't, I couldn't get past Paramore and then Extreme for my, you know, the yeah, two standouts cool. for me. Yep. I had two records. I had, I don't want to sound like a broken record, pun intended, but um, Ariel Posen released another record this year called Reasons Why, which I loved. I I, I think the last few years I've been on a Ariel Posen bender. Yeah. Is it still a bender after several years or it's just a thing now? Uh, it's, I don't know. It's maybe a thing now. Maybe it's like a NASCAR it's, track. Like it's a, oh, we a just go permanently one Could turning be. circles around you just put, and around. You put the brick on the accelerator. One big bend. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. Anyway, it's a great, great, great record. And Diesel put out a new record, a, a long player, a, like a full band production album, Bootleg Melancholy. And um, loved it. Lots of great writing, performances, production. Like Diesel at... His pop magic best, I'd say. It's a fantastic record. And 
um, for guitar players, the, it's just the parts and the production are beautiful throughout the record. It's not... It's not like Hep Fidelity where there's wailing guitar solos in every song. Mm. The although there's some cool cool moments for sure, but just really really cool parts. Did you, uh, Rob? Did you hear that record? Yeah, I've got. Oh, that was I'm one of the ones I bought fan. on vinyl and. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, pre-ordered and. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoy that. I enjoyed that and Sunset Suburbia, which was the previous one, more so yeah, than okay. Alone with Blues. Yeah. Like, I know that was kind of a COVID record that he did everything himself, but um, yes. I definitely yeah. enjoy more of that, you know, his original singer-songwriter, um, yeah. you know, band stuff. It's great. Even though, you know, he again, he plays pretty much everything on yeah, that record, right. except Lee Maloney comes in and plays some drums. Was that the... And oh. Bernie plays sax as well. Bernie Brummond returns from the Injectors. Oh, yeah. so that dude on the... Whatever track yeah, it is. Yeah, it's track yes. six. Uh, I, yeah. These days you're like listening in the car and even when I put the record on, I just song titles <sighs> escape me now. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, sure. Is that the album where he did the promo stuff where we're standing in the, like in the middle of the road with a Nashville sign? Yeah, that was... The promo stuff? He, was he, that the one? He recorded a video clip in... Um, I can't remember what... I just re- it's it was like he's it. standing in a... It's like in a... In a the, the, in, like a the middle in between two lanes of a road yeah. in like a green strip yeah, and a big one. sign that says Nashville is there. Um, and he plays a jazz master. I remember that. He's got, he's playing a jazz master in the video. I thought of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloody offsets. They're Thank everywhere. You. There, yeah. There's, don't turn, don't, don't, whatever you do, don't turn around. <laughs> don't turn around. Because <laughs> there's a lot of them behind you. There's offsets everywhere. <laughs> and I think he's holding a strat on the album cover. White strat. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good times. Good times. Um, so yeah, they were my they were my two standout records released this year. I didn't get quite as uh, uh, forensic as as you, Gabor, but I loved your categories. I really did. Well, you know. All right. Jumping along. Yeah. Rolling Stone released the top two hundred and fifty guitar players, and the, in world, the world went list. mad. <laughs> They've done this before. In fact, Rob, I remember you covered this on the Musicians in Inn. Your, yeah, the Musicians Inn, which was your online COVID roundtable discussions, which was super cool. Which was how we kind we of met. met. Yeah, that's where we all met. I think. Um, See, something good so, did yeah. come out of COVID. Oh, so many things, so many things. Um, what, did you guys check this out much? What did, were there any comments? What did you make of it? I, I actually just wanted people to stop talking about yeah. it so that it totally invalidated their whole list because it was okay. just ridiculous. It's how many people are complaining and whinging about, oh, but oh. my favourite guitarist isn't on the list. How many right, Rick Beata yeah, yeah. videos are there of... Um, why I didn't include such and such? And, and again, such and such. Oh, yeah. again, my belief is... Somebody put in chat GPT, give me a list of right. guitarists where greatest, best, blah, blah, blah was mentioned. And then they yeah. just went, spit it out, done. Yeah. And that was it. It was, I reckon, it was no journalistic integrity or effort put into it at all, which screams Rolling Stone magazine yeah, yeah, days yeah. anyway. And when <laughs> I look, when I looked at it, when I looked at it, because it, it does, you know, it starts at 250 and then countdowns to one. And Andy mm-hmm. Summers two fifty. I Come know on. That, that's just. <laughs> it was always. It was almost oh, like man. they put someone kind of cool at two fifty, so it's the first yeah. person. And then, then it's like, oh, I haven't heard of this guy. Never heard of this guy. Never heard of this guy. And then <laughs> I, I, I said to myself, number one, I bet you it's Hendrix of Van Halen, guaranteed. And it was Hendrix, of course. But Chuck Berry, even uh, Chuck Berry, yeah, yeah, number yeah, two. two. Yeah. Come and on, page it. three yeah. was it? Oh, and then Van Halen really? four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's. I, okay. I found. I found. It was just. To me, it was just funny how many people did videos on YouTube about it, complaining that. Oh, but such and such was it. That to me, that was funnier than the actual list. More, in, more interesting than the actual list. But it got people a bit go ballistic on those. Yeah. It got a bit boring. And is that the motivation, though? Do you think that Rolling Stone magazine go? We need clicks. Yeah, and, I'm sure they and do. And outrage gets more clicks. I'm sure they do. And so let's just no one, no one knows this better than someone like Rick Beato. Yeah. I mean, you know that the you can just see when you see the the thumbnail of him looking angry yeah. and going, "Why didn't they include <laughs> such and such in it?" You know that, that brings clicks. Um, so I think, yeah. yeah, it's it's it was. I think it was a way to get people to click. Yeah. Of course, it was. Um, 
Yeah. Because how? I mean, how do you judge it? Yeah. What, what's the criteria? And, uh, There's no criteria. I mean, Rolling Stone magazine, they would just, if anything, they would just go by sort of popular culture rather than actual, you know, looking at realistically guitar player, you know. But uh, but I think yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm with Rob. They probably just went, um, chat GTP, can you give us a list of the 250 <laughs> top guitar players? In saying that, I picked out a few weird things and – you could oh, yeah. you could sit and nitpick for uh, forever, but I thought PJ Harvey in the top fifty. Yeah, that was weird. Nah, especially when Nuno's at like one ninety two and Andy Summers is two fifty. Yeah. And PJ Eric, Harvey and Eric Johnson's at like two hundred and seven. <laughs> it's like what? Anyway, so oh, I thought man. that was weird. Um, I also thought that them putting Hetfield, Hammett, Angus, and Malcolm Young, Greenwood, O'Brien. All together, but then they put all of the Rolling Stones guitarists separately. No. And I thought, okay, yeah. that's weird. And then the Joe Perry was there, but Brad Whitford wasn't. Like, that was oh, weird. Dodgy. And yeah. then, yeah, the things that I mentioned, like you mentioned Andy Summers at 250, Eric Johnson at 205, Nuno at 197, and Lukather at 186. I mean, it's a thing. Someone look at that. I mean, you'd yeah. think. But also, do you think that maybe they realise that guitar players aren't going to scroll all the way to the bottom and just, <laughs> just put their favourite the- ones in the first 50 or 60? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, probably. Um, oh, and then some notable, that's funny. some notable notables that were missing that have been mentioned, but um, Tommy Emanuel, Gary Moore, George Benson, Paul Kossoff, Joe Bonamassa, Guthrie Govan, Paul Gilbert, yeah. Glenn Campbell, Ingve, Robin Ford, Zach Wilde, and Eric Gales. And then yeah, Taylor yeah. York, who I did get his name wrong before, sorry. Taylor yeah, York Taylor from York. Paramore. Um, Zach is the drummer. Jo- George Benson, you'd think. I mean, you'd have to include someone like George Benson in that personally, but what do I know? Grammys, like everything. He's I mean, one. super influential guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. They probably they saw had, Beato's um, video on his improvisation <laughs> and went, let's leave him out because Beato will do a video. Well, he re- just released another video to, uh, just yesterday, the day before, Beato, um, that um, Frank Gambale was on in. Gambale the Gambale yeah, video as well. Okay. <laughs> How can you not have Frank Gambale on it? Anyway. I mean, one one thing I did like about this is a lot of great female guitarists on their Khaki King. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. HER. PJ Harvey, I'm glad she's on the list in terms of like influence and... Uh, on that sort of level, um, there was her but, and Yvette Young was on Yvette it. Yvette Young was on it too. Bonnie Ray, uh, Yvette Young, Unreal mm. Man. That's cool. So I mean, stuff like that's kind of cool. Well, Saint it Vincent shines on it? a bit of a light. Yes, she was in the top ten. I oh, was she top ten? Top okay. Yeah, she should be yeah. too. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, okay. There you go. The Rolling Stone. It was. It was a bit of a thing and something people wanted to talk about. And oh, there was a lot of winking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but I think you're right. I think it's. Yeah. I mean, any list of anything, isn't it? It's going to cause a, yeah. a ruckus. Best Star Wars movie. I mean, come on. I mean, it is Empire Strikes Back. But after that, <laughs> you know, people get cranky about the- Hey, Phantom Menace, the- man. No, what? I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> you mean you're not even going to consider Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Caravan of Courage. But anyway- yeah. Rogue One, man. <laughs> Rogue One was very good. All right, favourite gig Rogue you One, yeah. attended it was outstanding. It was probably the best of the Disney era. Anyway, it's a different podcast. <laughs> Although I did, I don't know if you guys ever listened, but I did do a show, Star Wars and Guitars. With, yeah. With you, a, yeah, I did listen Star to that, Wars. yes. And uh, there's not a lot of guitars in Star Wars, it turns out, but it was a good excuse to talk about guitars and Star Wars. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> favourite gig you attended did anyone get to any cool gigs this year, uh, uh, Gabor? Uh, I don't think I saw anyone other than myself play this year. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, and, uh, you always make that's sure the they put him in front of a mirror. <laughs> yeah, there's always a mirror where it's somewhere where it's in. <laughs> I need to see myself. Uh, Show of no, the I don't year. think I've got... Show I don't year. think... Did I come to one of yours? No, I think that was last year. Was that last that year? That was Cool and Bowls. Cool yeah. and Bowls? That was the year before. Um, so then, no, I don't think... That's, it's a curse of the musician. It's I work, you know, 
I, I'm, yeah. I'm not as rock and roll as Rob, where he has understudies so he can go and watch Paramore. But I don't have understudies. <laughs> I can only go when it's midweek because I don't have kids. <laughs> yeah, I've got kids. That's a that's, well, not a problem. I shouldn't say that's a problem. But um, no, I don't think I've gone to any concerts um, at all. Maybe does does my my the school band my daughter plays in? Let's just say that the yes. school band my daughter plays. In. <laughs> Is that gig of the year? I saw it. What does she play? Sorry, what does she play? What does she play? Clarinet. Awesome I, and I saw them at least three times last week only. So cool. there you go. That's my Good job. Her, her school band. Gigs of the year. I love Best it. Best of the year. Rob. Well, you, um, you already mentioned the Paramore gig. That's yeah. Awesome. So I went to Noiseworks in February, uh, Blues Fest in April, of which Bonnie Raitt was kind of the standout for me. Um, then Extreme Living Colour in September, which was... Yeah. Just a crazy story. We ended up in some backstage, like, corporate box, the owner's box, watching from there, just side of stage straight down on top of wow. everyone, which is just the Unreal. freak happenance, and thanks to Pete and the, um, all the guys there. Um, Dixie Chicks in October, or the Chicks, sorry, and that was amazing oh, yeah, yeah. From for a completely uh-huh. different reason, but for the fact that... Sitting there and listening and watching, knowing that every musician was playing live, singing live, no yeah, tracks, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a yeah. real band, you know. Um, Paramore is my number. That was the most recent, and I'll, yeah. you know, that that's probably my number one. But they have tracks. They all play live, but you know they got little things from the albums in the background, samples yeah, and whatever. Sure. Um, I think the one thing that stood out for me with Noiseworks was I had not seen John Stevens live before. But that okay. guy, vocalist-wise, and I'm probably just saying what everybody knows already, but world-class vocalist. Just absolutely world-class. Just yeah, he never hits a sure. bum note, like strong from the first song to the last. And I think that might have been the last show of the tour as well okay. in Brisbane. And he just sounded as you know, probably better than when he was younger. And then you yeah. get Erwin Thomas, a.k.a. Jack Jones on guitar on that tour. Yeah. And, yeah, it was that was a dream. But um, out of all of those, this so all of them are very guitar-heavy shows. Uh, everyone was midweek, so I could go. <laughs> and Easter <laughs> yes. I went. I only went to Blues Fest on Easter Monday, and I think I went Good Friday too. But... Uh, yeah, Paramore for me. It seems like a very Paramore centric episode. Sure, why not? It's a great album. Everyone out there should check it out. Very cool. I saw a couple of gigs. I mean, I saw I saw a bunch of gigs. I saw a bunch of shows. I probably saw the Sydney Symphony more often. Oh, that's than, cool. Uh, mm. Any rock shows? So that was fun. Got to see some some good shows there. Not much guitar, but uh, maybe next year we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of. Um, yeah, band gigs. I got. I was so excited. I got to see Mono, which is a Japanese post rock band. I think they were, they were mentioned on our top live albums show yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I love. I love that band. So um, that was playing at the Manning Bar in Sydney, which is like a medium sized venue, about nine hundred seats. And I got there, um, saw the supports. We lost the sea, which are an Australian post rock band, and. Oh, I'm so sorry. Another fantastic band that I, I got into, that I'm getting into. But um, so I somehow got right up against the rail, right in front of Tucker, who's the lead guitarist, and um, took the show in there. It was incredible. It was incredible. Mm. So I've never been um, – I've been digging post-rock for a long time, but I've never been to a live post-rock show. Um, so it was – yeah, it was awesome. So definitely seeing Mono in March this year. Um, I saw Switchfoot in February as well, same venue. Okay. Um, they were great, man. They were great. I was going to say nineties old rock pop band, but they haven't really stopped. But they were good. I yeah. saw them at Blues Fest in I want to say twenty eighteen, okay. something yep, like yep. that. And yeah, they were surprised. Pack it for me. They were really good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was rad. So um, it was cool. And the Manning Bar, such a cool venue. I, I love seeing bands okay. in a smaller setting if you can get up. Oh, it's always nice, nice in a small close. setting, isn't it? It's Yeah. I mean, 900 seats is not small. If 900 people turn up to my gig, my next gig, I'll be pretty happy. But <laughs> yeah. 
But there you go. So that was, okay, live shows. I think for next year, I'm really keen to see a lot more of the stuff going on in Sydney. Though I haven't done that for a while, as in local bands, local musicians. Um, we've got some great players. We've got Pete Northcote, who does a Thursday night residency. I've got to see that. That's, you know, he pulls some great local players. And I think uh, uh, I've got an observation in that all the international acts seem to have been touring midweek. So I've been yes. able to see yeah. a lot of international bands gotcha, yeah. on a Wednesday yeah. or a Tuesday night, yeah. which is awesome. But our local acts, they only go out on weekends. So it's not viable. Yeah. When, I, when I was a, when I was a youngster, That's we're working, yeah. there was heaps of midweek gigs. We went and watched um, like res- monthly residencies at the Vanguard and you would see Diesel play for a month and okay. – or. You know, that the Metro, there'd be midweek gigs from international acts and local acts, and you would just be constantly being able to see bands. But now it seems that people are only touring Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoons, which I forgot to mention, I did see James Rain a couple of months ago uh, at Miami Marquetta, and that was awesome. With the OG YouTube man, Brett Kingman. Brett Kingman yeah. and yeah, Very cool. great band and uh, got to hang out with Nikki Curta who's singing backing vocals with him at the moment and it was yeah great to see her again. But no, I did buy a ticket. Oh, I, I don't like taking freebies, so I always buy a uh-huh. ticket. Hey, I'm all about freebies. So <laughs> if any, anyone wants to give me freebies out there, I couldn't even fit in the room. There's so many freebies. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot in this room, but a lot of it has to be sent back yeah. to in the next few it's days. It's all so. got my address. I'm just going to change the address, address to my somewhere. house before I leave. Right. He won't even know. Just all this, the courier is going to just drop stuff at my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is a good time to bring up gear of the year. So gear that either you bought or you checked it out or Stuff you got a bit excited about, um, Gabor. I know you do like a, a run a gear of the year thing with Alex, obviously for the super fun, yeah, happy, yeah, awesome, yeah. Um, fun, happy, awesome pedal, happy show. Um, <laughs> the, you missed about it, uh, six or seven were happiest there, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't practiced that for a while. Um, is, is there anything that sticks out or stuff? Something you got personally? Yeah, well, I've got to say, and, and, and Rob can see it now. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to move away from the microphone for a sec. Uh, here. I'm going to hand it to oh Rob. God. It weighs about a ton. <laughs> the, the, uh, Rob is holding my gear of the year. Oh, jeez. It Holy weighs about a ton. Molly. But this is the, uh, I call it Halbert. Or actually, a, a viewer said I should call it Halbert. A Halbert is a like a battle axe with a spear on top. It's sort of like a spear oh, battle axe. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it kind of looks like it. So it's a, All right, talk, talk us through talk it for the people without the special glasses. The special glasses, okay. What so it's a, it's a and, and Rob can hold it because he's stronger than me, and it's very heavy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy heavy, isn't it? It's insane. It's insanely heavy. It weighs about as much as my 50 on 50 combo. <laughs> oh, that's saying like something. So it's a, it's, a, it's a parts guitar that I put together. Uh, it's a, a walnut body. In a sort of, it's a kind of stylized shape of a, a non-reverse fiber. Um, mm. It has an aluminium neck on it, um, which on its own weighs about as much as most guitars. Actually, the, when it when it <laughs> arrived, the piece of wood, because it's a massive piece of wood, the walnut, it's solid walnut, weighs about as much as a whole guitar. The neck on its own weighs about as much as a whole guitar, the aluminium <laughs> neck. And then it's got this massive tailpiece on it. So it's, a, it's an aluminium neck and a tailpiece made by a company called Robot Graves. And the mm. tailpiece is the thing that you can retrofit on any Jazzmaster style guitar or Jaguar style guitar. It fits into that, that trim pocket. And it's yep. a thing where you can tune the strings behind the bridge so if you if you yes. think of a jazz master you've got one behind you there i can see um in the yeah. picture if you think of that the strings are behind the bridge and going to the trem part it has six little saddles it can move and you can actually tune that to whatever you want to tune it to and then it has two pickups in it by a friend of your show to, all of our shows uh, but glenn evans from uh, mr glenn's pickups in new zealand hey glenn hi glenn we love Glenn. The Drake, which he sent me about 
four or five different phonetic ver- versions of how to say it because it's it's dragon okay. in Welsh. Drag. Ah, okay. Drag. So you said dry, like if something is dry, not wet, it's dry, and then put a G at the end. Drag. Um, Drag. Doom pickup, and another pickup that's behind a bridge. Uh, but it's just wild. It It is really weird. <laughs> the, it's a weird neck, isn't it? But it's really it's comfy. Freaking cold. It's cold. That's the other thing you've got to get used to with aluminium uh, necks. So my yeah. gig last weekend at Kingscliff Beach Hotel, which by the afternoon you end up in full sun, Oh, this would yeah. be hot. Hot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you can, in the summer, you can grill stuff on it. Um, if you take the strings off, you get the nice grill marks on, off the, from the frets. Oh, yeah, I can, but, I can see that with some zucchini. Some grilled hot zucchini. In summer, cold oh, yeah, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a vegan here. Um, but yeah, so it's a weird guitar. Uh, it's, it's really out there and have, there's no strap ins. I concur. It's extremely weird. Um, and yeah, having that, the tunable strings behind the bridge with a, a separate That's pickup fine. for it. So it's tuned to like a. I recorded a song. Uh, for, I kind of joined this band uh, not long ago, and I recorded a song with an ebo, uh, and it also playing some sort of plucky parts, and I tuned it to its sort of a harmonic minor esque scale. The notes behind a string uh, behind a bridge uh, so that uh, it, it's bizarre it's it, it, you can go to our youtube channel and check out the video of the guitar it's it's a wild wild thing but it's just so cool and the neck it's a weird shape but it's a really Very comfortable flat. neck super flat because oh, it's yeah. aluminium so yeah. they, they yeah. can make it whatever thickness they want because it's super strong but it's a really nice feeling neck it's a great guitar so that's my gear of the year um, probably, nice. um, or yeah, the other thing, the Tonex, IK Multimedia Tonex, which is kind of like the Kemper, but more affordable, sort of a profiling kind of thing, pedal that I use sure. on my pedal board as well. Um, and depending nice, on man. when this drops, you can go and check <laughs> out the, um, the super fun, awesome, happy time pedal show pedal of the year awards. Yes. Or I think we call it which the, I always look forward the to. 2023 Pedal of the Year Extravaganza. I think that's Ooh. what we called. It. Yeah. So you've upgraded to an extravaganza. It's an extravaganza. That's, that's something well, to look forward it's to. It's always really been an extravaganza, but now we just call it for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's <laughs> very good. It's just it's a really wacky thing, but it's 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 I really like it, and I I, I really like love playing it. I love the sound of it, and it's. It's something kind of so out there, but yeah, oh yeah, at the same time, really, really cool. Love what, it. What, man. Are, what are your That's thoughts crazy. on it, Rob? It's super heavy. It's extremely heavy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've got a you know a one for one sort of fifty eight gold top, and that's heavy. Mm-hmm. And I had a double neck Mij SG. This is at least double neck or more. This is way heavier. Than more that. heavier than a double neck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, how's the neck dive? Oh well, it is a bit. Yeah, that's. They so what... haven't worked out where to put the strap button yet. No, uh, th- he put. He. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to wear it stand. Play it standing up. It's too heavy. You it's... need to get one of those ones that attaches to your belt, and then like <laughs> spin the harness, it, spin it around. Yeah, like a ZZ top one. ZZ top thing, you, like, and then put spin a harness <laughs> over your each shoulder, and it just attaches to your belt. No, I don't think I'm ever going to play it standing up. So it's it's just for <laughs> for videos sitting down. So uh, there's there's little holes there for the stro- strap. Especially like people with your build and the scoliosis and all that. Cool God, yeah, thing, it, it would bend me in half. That thing. I mean, I, I have a very high center of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um the headstock is very reminiscent of the old. You know, remember the old Kramer, Kramer ones? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Travis Bean. Travis that Bean kind too. Of yeah. Thing. That vibe, yeah, nice. You can put your phone through there. You can put it. your phone in it. It's a good place if you, if you eat a hot dog or something just, while you're playing. You just shove it in there. And, <laughs> big fat cigar or burrito, no, or something like that. You know, no cigarettes will fit. <laughs> <laughs> but you could actually put a whole poly tune in there. You actually like yeah. TC electronic, TC electronic poly poly tune. Tune. It's quite big. Put it in there. Oh yeah, mini pedal. It it's got a mini pedal there. space in the yeah. headstock. <laughs> <laughs> Built in pedal board. Just add more weight. Just add more weight to that. Yeah. There's definitely a bit of a neck dive there. Because, like I said, the, the neck on its own, it's, it's, if they ever make a musician Cluedo, <laughs> you could, you know, <laughs> Mr. Green was murdered in the library with the aluminium neck. With the aluminium <laughs> neck. Gotcha. The funny thing is, who's that guy that does Where the Tone Comes From series on YouTube? 
the Nashville guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he just put strings between a couple between of benches, a couple of benches. And yeah, it yeah. sounds exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. But the benches yeah. do weigh less than this. Yeah, they do. So they you do. can take yeah. two benches around. Two, yeah. <laughs> What wood are the benches made out of? That's what everyone wants That's to know. Right. What tone wood are the benches? Tone wood. It's, a, it's a tone wood <laughs> IKEA plywood. <laughs> All right, Rob, gear of the year or gears? <laughs> That's my weights for the day. Um, my gear of the year. Oh, well, I haven't. I've been quite good this year, and so I'm hoping Santa brings me something new. But uh, my gear of the year. Did I write it down? Is the Boss RE202. Ah, so it's the Space yes. Echo, the new Space Echo, and yeah. uh, it replaced the delays in my HX Stomp. And now wow. I've actually, the Stomp is off my main board. So it. It'll come it, back. It's been amazing. It'll I come love back. that thing. Like, yeah. Lo fi, it's not exactly lo fi, it can be. But I love yeah. I love the hold and the self oscillate, and I use them a lot. Like just okay. w- how you use the Miku stomp, <laughs> just to make people laugh. <laughs> I'll just hit it, and yeah. and then you can, That's great. and then I yeah. break it. So if you tap it like slow, tap tempo it one, you can get it to the oscillate to break and just sort of sit on okay. a rhythm, and then let it drop That's away. Cool. And sometimes I'll play a solo over the hold um, function and then you guess when to take it off and then it ends at, on the last note of the solo and fades out. So, nice. yeah, that has been... I'm a big delay person, but I'm a kind of a pristine digital delay person. Okay. So okay. To, to go and make that leap to a space echo just speaks for how good a pedal it is. Yeah. But I think a lot of a lot of people be. think that that tape echo style echoes are quite dark and like that, but they're actually mm. a lot brighter than a lot of people think. I mean, unless you do the really old um, Yeah, the old tape. The old yeah. tape. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a new tape, they're actually quite bright. Mm. There's actually quite a, it's more bottom end rolled off than the yeah, top end right. rolled off. Um so you hear more what's going on. Yeah, nice. But yeah, it's become Very, yeah, yeah, it's become a a go-to for me, and I just have the one delay. I'm boring. I just have one delay on my board. Ah, oh, so lame. So it's it. That's the one. <laughs> and it goes into the well, effects so- loop, so it stays, you know, <clears throat> sounding how it should. No, this front okay. end with delay business. Yeah, I have, we, I think we've spoken about my reasons for that before, but, yeah, it's... Uh, we have. Yeah. We have. Nice, man. Very And cool. I did buy Very the cool. neon pink EVH 5150. <laughs> Oh, yeah, come on. Tell but, us about but that. that's not a 2023. That came out in 2022, yeah, But think. you bought it in 2023. I did. But when did you... Well, that that, that? was just... Uh, I never thought I would own a pink guitar is the meme for today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hashtag. And it's taken a bit to get it to settle. Like, I thought... I guess with the maple neck, uh, it's quite... It's not a super thin neck, but it was a bit of a banana neck to begin with, and holding the tune was a little bit, but it just all the little tricks that you learn over the years and I just employed them all and now it's holding, it's stable. I took the drop, the EVHD tuner off it. I think that was causing some issues okay. when I was dive bombing, you know, doing big Steve Stevens dive bombs and um, which you can see on my Instagrams and stuff. But uh, Whilst doing the kill switch stuff too. Kill switch is two hands over. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, all all Love the little it. gimmicky things to the '80s show, but that's a really that's a it's a good guitar. It's a you know for a Mexican thing, but the kill switch, yeah. It's just I even have my keyboard player come over sometimes mid song and just start hitting the kill switch, <laughs> and it's just like funny. <laughs> or we'll end a song together where he's you know hitting chords and then I'm hitting the kill like switch. staccatos and we just staccato nice. together, and um, yeah. But go and check one out if you get a chance. Um, they come in a few different colours. You don't have to get neon pink, but I you still, can. That blue one looks so good. The blue does that's, look good. That's, I always wanted one. And, well, since it came out, I always wanted one. And even that stealth grey looks really good yeah. too with the black and red. And, yeah. Yeah. So they were my two main purchases. These I did buy other things, but they're mostly from the 80s. And, um, but, yeah. 
Cool, man. Very, very How cool. How about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, what about you? Yeah, well, for me, probably the favourite thing I bought this year was... I'm waving a guitar behind me on my wall. Oh. <coughs> it's, a, it's an 84 Fernandez The Function. I've owned a similar one of these before. I don't know if you guys remember. It was black. Yeah. Um, but it was it was from their 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length mm. range. So like super strat sort of thing, um, I should say, for the folks at home. I love I love 80s Fernandez. Um, I didn't really like the 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 Gibson scale thing on the strat. Okay. I, I'm just too just too used to the, the regular 25 and a half inch. Anyway, this is this is that. Um, yeah, it's cool. Picked it up uh, mo- for Mojo Stomp Boxes in Sydney. They were doing a thing they call a thrift sale. Ah. So basically unserviced guitars, fixer-upperers. Um, and, and I bought it with that oh. in mind. And at the moment, it's, it had the original Dogfighter pickups, which I think looks super cool. Um, but I've dropped the set of the Fender. Um, oh, the Alnico, not Alnico, the Cunife ones. Cunife, yeah. thank you very much. The Cunife I, I, I remember the episode where you were talking about it. Uh, yeah, there is an e- <laughs> <laughs> Link in the show notes. The link will be guitarspeakpodcast.com. You're welcome. <laughs> They're all there. Um, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, hi, Product Tim. Placement. At Stomp Boxes, if you're listening. Hi, Tim. Hey, Tim. I've got one of his um, – I've got an old Greco Les Paul that was a uh, um, – or I mean – under quotation marks, Les Paul. That was one of those yes. sort of uh, fixer upper kind of sales that I bought. And great guitar. Yeah, cool. Man, yeah. he has some great. He has some really great stock that comes in. Yeah, but I don't know. Is it just me, or can we get photos of the whole guitar in one photo from him? No, That's it's always just little bits. I know. I just want like, just give me a full size it's, like. With <laughs> we, we're just we were just talking about it the other day when when Matt and I got together for coffee. It's it's little bits of photo, little little bits of the guitars, and then uh, screenshots of conversations with people. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to lowball him. Trying to yeah, lowball yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what you get from that's what you get from Tim. Um, little yeah, little yeah. bits of the guitar and, um, and screenshots. <laughs> yeah, and he's opened it. He's opened a bricks and mortar place now, which oh. is crazy. Yeah. So I've I've been here a couple of times. It's I need amazing, to go. To, so. I need to make a trip to Sydney sometime and go there. Tim's great, yeah, great, nice. and, and super knowledge when it comes to all the Japanese made stuff. Yeah, yeah, he knows heaps of stuff, heaps of stuff. So well, he's got ready made customers in us. Tech there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Myj, don't stop. So yeah, that that was cool. It hasn't actually been played that much. It was really dirty. Like it got the steel wool, it got the lemon oil, got all sorts of cleaning going on. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of it's awesome. A friend of mine is actually selling a, an old Fernandez that he restored. Um, on uh, Facebook Marketplace right now. I'm just seeing if I can find okay. it. Yeah, um, sure. To oh, show whilst, you. Whilst you're doing that, I'll just say the other thing I noticed, and this was um, through doing some gear reviews for Fender. Um, just tr- just trying different pickups on gigs was incredible. So I've, I'm always like a my pickups pretty vintage, voice single coils and humbuckers. So nothing crazy, but I, that's what I dig. But playing. Um, um, Filtertrons and Broadtrons and P90s um, through some of the gear reviews I did was <clears throat> brain explosion. Yeah. I love P90s. Like, I think I think 2024 will involve some P90s or Filtertrons or both for me. Don't forget Jazzmaster pickups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good boy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw it out there. So, no, that's fine. So that was that was sort of the that was my sort of my gear discoveries. Got to play a bunch of things this year, which was which was fun. Um, Gabor, you, you just flashed. The oh, picture sorry, yeah, yeah. Is, that a, it's a, is that a revolver? It's an old. Uh, hang on, uh, I just put it away again. Um, it is a FR five one two custom. Yeah, uh, lovely looking guitar. I just again, you need the special glasses to see it. Yeah, yeah, I think the FRs, I think that's from the Revolver series. Yeah, it looks he nice, just re- He restored it all, and I think it was another one that was sort of in pieces, and he, but I think he went as far as buying all the original parts and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. I think we all must have, well, I definitely built a parts caster strat this year, and I bought a mid-'80s Bill Lawrence made-in-Japan strat. 
Oh, um, yes, I remember. That's great. Yeah, it's been a it's been a year for that. Have you have you seen my the nice. Super Strata built this year? Only only through your videos. Only before. through my videos. Hang on, you you guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll go and grab it. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Fretboard Biology, the comprehensive online guitar course put together by master guitar instructor Joe Elliott. I was a beta tester for the course and loved it. Players like Brett Garset and Greg Cox have also endorsed the course. And right now, Joe is offering a great deal on the course. Check out the link in the show notes for Fretboard Biology. All right, funniest gig story whilst we're doing this. Rob, you got any funny stories? I actually couldn't bring anything to mind. Uh, there was a couple of funny moments. Uh, we played the Brisbane Truck Show <laughs> with Living in the 80s at the Plough Inn in Brisbane, uh, South Bay. Nice. And Kerry Jacobson was there sort of right in front of us and we played Rain by Dragon. So we had Dragon oh, really? drummer watching yeah. us play oh, cool. his song. So that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, yeah. The only other thing was we played North Stradbroke Island for Southport Yacht Club's members and family thing. And we had to... I'm sorry, mate. That must have been hard. Well, no, the hard <laughs> thing was... The hard thing was that it was a massive property and there was a few hundred people there and we had so much coverage and I've got a big PA, but it's not massive. It's only two single 18s and three-way um, up. So it's a four-way system, but it's not It's not massive. It does pretty much every venue we play, but a big outdoor yeah, that needs island a lot. property. That needs a lot. So we needed to bring everything, but it had to be put on boats for like a 35-minute you know, through Sanctuary Cove or whatever. Okay, yeah. And what happened was everything was just getting thrown on the boat with no thought yeah. of what was going to happen. And then as soon as we take off, the water sucks in the back of the boat and stuff just gets wet. Oh, oh Like, no. you know, up to, I don't know, 10, cent- 10 20 centimetres. Oh, Things are just getting wet. So I'm, as we're... Flying at a rate of knots to get over to the island. I'm lifting stuff and putting stuff uh. on top of things. And then, uh, so I learned from that on the way back to put all the road cases that were on wheels at the back uh-huh. and the speakers up the front. But then we get to the gig and we're all set up and we're ready to sound check. And I go, Where are my guitars? Oh, no. Uh oh. And so everyone's like going back to the dock where we where the boat came on and they're looking on the beach and then some random guys from the cert, from the yacht club helped us so we went up to the offices to maybe they took them up there we looked all around under the stage because we we're under this kind of big uh, uh i don't even know how to describe it but it was a like a like a big wooden structure mm. so um nothing turns out that they got put in the front hold of the second boat and no one took them out. Oh. So they radioed the boat to come okay. back. And this is 10 minutes before we go on. Oh, so I've sound checked. This is usually what happens at the gigs. I sound check everybody else. Mm-hmm. I've set my rig up and then 10 minutes before I get changed and then I grab my guitar uh-huh. and they weren't there. And I wouldn't have even known. I would have gone and got changed except for the keyboard player go, Rob, where are your guitars? Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then, so, yeah, I, like, that just came to mind then because yeah. I'd meant I'd put a note about North Australia, but I'd forgotten all about the guitars being oh, left on the boat. Yes. So, yeah, that's kind of my funny gig story of the year. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that's so funny, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's more painful. funny now. More painful. Yeah, after yeah. therapy. In after therapy, you know, you laugh. <laughs> Any wacky stuff on your gigs, Gabor? Uh, not that I can really remember. Um, m- my gigs are pretty sort of straightforward, you know, little restaurants and bars and stuff like that. There's never really anything too funny happening. Um, plus, I'm a I'm an extremely serious kind of guy. So yes, yes, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one, no one tipped you any like arancini balls or anything like that. Put them. 
No, I, w- I wish. <laughs> I wish. If someone wants to give me arancini balls, I'm always, I'm always up for arancini. Um, no, not that I can think of. There's nothing really that I can think of that that was really any exciting. Sure. My gigs are not very exciting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure they're exciting to, to go to and, and witness. But yes. So. Oh yeah, it's 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 an extravaganza. It's extravaganza. Yet again, but, <laughs> <laughs> but not just in a in a you know yeah. deep spiritual sort of way. Not a yes funny. yes yes gotcha yeah gotcha yeah. yes. So um, how about, how about oh, you? Anything for you, man? Yeah, same thing. Not really. Nothing. Nothing out of the audience. I did great. Yeah, I played. You know. A, most weekends I was out playing. So um, I did about 50, 50 gigs, which for me is heaps because, you know, I, I teach yeah. music full time. Um, so, yeah, I had, I had, had a great time playing. No pedal boards filled with beers at chisel shows, mate, or nah, this year? It's pretty tame. Our, our demographic is, you know, they, they, know all the, they know all the words to the song. So yeah. it, it's pretty tame. Where we go? I mean, people get into it. People go bonkers, but yeah, I think I had more prob- problems with beer um, when I was doing wedding functions because oh, you yeah. wouldn't have a stage. Oh, wedding people and wedding reception guests get can get very loose, whereas the chisel crowd they like like me just want to go home and have enjoyed the gig and have a cup of tea, and um, most of the time. I did 167 gigs. Oh man, this year. that's killer! Well done. I, I haven't count. I've got three more to go, and then that's it for me for this year. But um, I haven't counted. But I reckon it'd be around 150, 160 as well. But, I think I've but got 17, 17 left this month. <laughs> well, I only have this weekend, and then I'm then I'm off. So yeah, you got a different yeah. different uh, thing going on. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, we um yeah 143 band shows. It was. Okay. And then solos on top. That's massive, so man. 24, 25 solo gigs. Oh, next year, no solo gigs. Fingers crossed. Okay. I oh. think I think I did maybe a handful of duo gigs. Hey. One gig with three other people and a cello. <laughs> and then the rest was solo. So probably 140, 150 solo gigs. Yeah. Man, that's um, nuts, you guys. That's killer. But it's your, it's your main bread and butter. I get yeah. that. That's fantastic. Fantastic you can work that much. And and 170-something YouTube videos. Really? Yeah. Wow. Man. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> it doesn't pay enough. <laughs> 172. Okay. But that's that's when we, um, in the future, filmed in the past our, <laughs> our Pedal of the Year podcast. Okay. Because, <laughs> um, uh, yes, yes. We, it's always live. You, all you people out there, we do this live. As you're listening to it, we're doing this live. Yeah. Definitely not pre-recorded. <laughs> well, yeah, I did a hundred. I would have done a hundred and forty-three gig promotional videos, but none more than about sixty seconds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they're all taken from gigs. So yeah. yeah. I I prefer to do that. You got to do a lot of post. Sure. Yeah. I don't have to do much post processing. Yeah. Hey, wow. this year was it was a big year for some heritage rock and roll kind of stuff. Um, Rob, you brought this up. Satriani playing on the Sammy Hagar, Van Halen, Best of Both Worlds tour. Is that what they're calling it? Best of All Worlds? Best of All Worlds, that's it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So if you thought that the... YouTube community was up in arms about the Rolling Stones 250 oh. guitar players. Don't get me started on them critiquing Satriani trying to play Mean Streets yeah. intro. Oh. Like, oh, and so many other YouTube, like people on YouTube, oh, oh it's easy. It's just like, oh, yeah, why can't yeah. you do it? Oh. Well, you wouldn't do it live on Howard Stern when he just requests, oh, what's the hardest riff? Oh, this one? And then just like <laughs> off the cuff. The thing that I love about Joe is just there's no ego. Yeah. Yep. Like he's just super humble, down to earth, and people are going, oh, they should have chosen Nuno to do it. Well, Nuno's got extreme, and Nuno's yeah. got his own thing going on. Yeah. And Sammy's like, if this is going to happen, this is the guy. They all get on. Yeah. He's super humble, and he'll do the work, and he'll, he'll play it, and he'll nail it yeah. without having to worry about being Eddie. Yes. And not being an, like... Uh, 
like a photocopy or a mm. poor imitation of. Yeah. He can tip the hat to Eddie, yeah. but he can do Satriani. Do his whole thing, yeah. Totally and they can do chicken foot songs, which who's going to come up and do a chicken foot song? Like, honestly, no one. Yeah. And and anyone that doubts Satriani should go and listen to Chicken Foot doing Highway Star, uh-huh. where, where Satriani plays the John Lord parts yep. as well as the Richie yeah, Blackmore it's killer. parts. It's killer. And so this is what this guy is capable of, and nobody should doubt what yeah. what he's capable of in this arena. And the other thing that upset me was people thinking it's a money grab. Well, first of all, they're in the music industry to make money. They're all trying to live. But the actual overriding thing is Sammy Hagar does not need another dollar. Yeah, of course. Like, he's only doing it because he loves it yeah. and because he wants to go out with a few friends and no one else is doing anything to honour Eddie. Yeah. And... Right, rightly or wrongly, like I think they should be, he should be left alone if he wants, you know, if Wolf doesn't want to do something, that's great. If Alex has had it and doesn't want to play with anyone but his brother, that's fine too. It's not for any of us to really comment on, be yeah. outraged about, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They've given their whole lives to, to us, you know, creatively and whatever else. They want to step back and that's great and just let their father's legacy. What did it leave it at what it is? That, that I'm perfectly fine. And we should, all should be fine with that. How dare they not do exactly what we want them to do? <laughs> yeah, that's How right. dare they? We own Come them. On. I Come bought on. a record back in 987. <laughs> Give what, me exactly what, what I want. What right do they have to not do what I want them to do? Come on. So I'm outraged at the outrage. Dance, monkey. <laughs> Dance for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think this is great. I think Satch will do a... Brilliant job mm. without yeah. without really having the pressure of imitation. Yeah, except for the, the guitar, he's painted the guitar. Did he? Did he do he, it? He did. He has one of his signature guitar. His he's going to do Satri- the Frankie he, thing on it. He did it on. Oh. He has it already. Oh. I've seen, but That's super, cool. But I, I like think that. different colors, different colors. But he has those stripes the same. No, I thought he was playing the chicken foot one. No, but I've, I'm sure I've seen pictures okay. of him with the. But it's different colors. But it's this, it's that. Let me have a All look. Right, look it All up because right. I thought he was just playing the chicken foot one, All but right. um, but yeah, I might have missed it. Yeah, I think but- it, I think it's cool because yeah, obviously they do the chicken foot thing together. Um, is it Jason Bottom on drums? Yeah, yeah. Who is he? Has he done some chicken foot? I know it's Chad. Chad. Smith. No, he does. He did the circle. The circle. That's it. Um, with Sammy, which has been you know the last sort of. Four or five years they've been doing that. Who's the guitar player uh, in the circle? Because he plays a- Vic Johnson. Yeah, yeah, he's great, man. Yeah. He's awesome as well. Yeah. And he, I Vic mean, Johnson's obviously good. they do some Van Halen stuff in the circle. Um, yeah. I've seen- and they do Led Zeppelin, but that's the thing. He said we're going to do Led Zeppelin, we're going to do Chicken Foot, we're going to do Sammy Hagar, we're going to do Van Halen. Yeah, but. In the past, where Van Halen's been a small portion, right? This time they're going to make it a larger portion, and they're going to they're going to try and get guests out. And you know, you got Michael Anthony, yeah, you got yeah. Sammy. It is, and- yeah, it is a chicken for guitar. Sorry, <laughs> I thought it was a Van Halen looking one. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, um, internet. <laughs> but, but yeah, and I think it'll be great. But one of the greatest things about this tour is Australia's own Ray Thistlethwaite is going to be their live keyboard player and second guitar player oh, on wow. that no tour. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. Because he's been touring with, with Satch. Satch yeah. 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 And Satch basically said to Sammy, you know, you want to do this live? Get Ray. So Ray's going to be on that tour How as well, cool, which man. is congratulations. Like, yes. One of the best musicians. And like, best singers. mustaches. Wow. Yeah. And he's got World a mousetrap heart, you know. So, um, yeah, Ray's great, and congratulations to him. Uh, yeah, yeah, should be great awesome. musician. Yeah, hopefully he'll talk him talk Sammy because Sammy doesn't really like to leave the states. So, um, oh, okay, but hopefully he can go. Hey, psst, psst, get down. Oh, that would be so you know, good. Do some shows. That would be really cool. Come on, copper. Let's Come go. On, to he's in his, Sammy's in his seventies, right? So, um, he's older than Dave, and he's still going hard. Yeah, yeah. Get- yeah. Get John Travolta to fly him and the mirror. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I love the idea. I like how the bits I heard Satriani, like you said, Rob, he's doing the he's doing the Van Halen parts, but he's using his Satriani tone, yeah. which he's mentioned about Mean Streets. You know, it was probably too gainy for Mean Streets, but nineties mm. Eddie was pretty gainy. 
once he once he started using Soldanos and then the got the fifty one fifty. So um I reckon it's cool. And so he's doing the Eddie, but he's also doing his own his own angle on it, which is cool. Because you could you could get there's probably a gazillion guitar players in their bedrooms who could play note for note Van Halen tunes now. Um Simon Hoss. But they won't have the they wouldn't have the temperament to like sit there in front of those crowds, the judgment for sure. You know, where, for sure. Where Satch doesn't have to worry about that. Nah, because he's, he's got his own thing. So I love that. I, I reckon it's cool. I reckon it's cool. People are going out and playing Van Halen. Like you said, if Wolf doesn't want to do it, that's that's cool. Like what he's doing in Mammoth is awesome. So yeah, he's tri- blazing his own trails, which is yeah. Great. That thing you raise, yeah, the outrage because people don't execute stuff how you think it should be. It's just it's bonkers. Yeah. Hey, I remember when um. When ACDC, when they got um, Axl Rose in to, to finish a tour, when Brian Johnson couldn't, yeah, like people go on bonks. I think, well, if Angus wants to get someone to sing the songs for his band, you know, it's his band, isn't it? Who's to say? Yeah. Who's to say? Don't don't do that. And again, he he did quite a good job. Like I, I thought it would Axl. Well, I mean, he sounds he he's the only job. one who kind of sounds a bit like that. <laughs> you know that. It's, you could find an angry Smurf or Axl Rose, one or the yeah. other. So. <laughs> All right. And, and you, you don't want to get a poor imitator. Like, at the end of the day, people are paying big money for these things. Yeah, yeah. And get a big just, name like Axl Rose. Yeah. But can I just say, how dare they not do exactly what we tell them to do? <laughs> I want it differently, and why don't they do exactly what I say? I'm just yes. going to go and shake my fist at this cloud. Yes. Oh, there's no cloud going past that I don't shake my oh. fist at. <laughs> All right. More, more heritage rock. Old guys rocking. The Rolling Stones put out a new record. Um, first record in almost 20 years. Did, did you guys hear it? I, I checked it out just this week because I thought, thought it would be interesting. The only thing I, I even knew about it was, uh, and this is gonna, this is gonna be, this is a very uncool story, but it's kind of funny too, actually, to a certain degree. Uh, I, I, I'm a football fan, as in the, the real football, not the one that people call soccer. It's not soccer; it's football. Yeah, round you, ball. You use your foot and a ball. The beautiful game. R- rugby. It's an egg that you throw. Yes. <laughs> it's not football. You pass it. You pass it. You, you throw. throw it. You throw a green. You rarely ever. Football. You rarely ever. Touch it with your foot. Anyway, that's a different story. Don't get me angry. Uh, how dare they not call it what I want it to be? Uh, no, but I, I watched um, probably one of the biggest sporting events in the world, which is the uh, what they call the El Clasico, when Real Madrid play against Barcelona, uh, league game in, in Spain, right? Uh-huh. The biggest sporting event uh, other than the Olympics. Um, anyway... Uh, there was something that happened, must have happened with the Rolling Stones and Spotify. Was there some sort of a deal they had with Spotify? With uh... Anyway, because um, uh, uh, Barcelona, their, their uh, sponsor, team sponsor on the jersey is Spotify. But for the one... Um, for the one game, the El Clasico, they had the um, Rolling Stones logo, that t- the mouth, the tongue thing, oh, okay. on the on the jersey. That's very cool. And and they played some Rolling Stones songs at the start of the, the, the game. And Mick Jagger and Ronnie Wood were in the audience. Uh-huh. And the funny thing was, the commentators all going about going saying, "Oh, there's Mick Jagger." And there's another uh, guy sitting next to him. <laughs> they didn't know who Ronnie Wood was. So, yeah, they didn't know who Ronnie Wood was. But, yeah, it was just funny that day. The whole time, the, com- the football commentators, who have no idea who the Rolling Stones are. Yeah. They know Mick Jagger, but they didn't know Ronnie Wood. There you uh, go. They were sitting, yeah. But that's the only thing I know about the new album. And they were talking about how the new album came out, I think, that day or the day before or something like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. so... Mick Jagger is, I believe, 80. I think Keith and Ronnie Wood are 79 and 76, respectively. Um, Charlie Watts, of course, certainly passed away, but he he's on a couple of tracks, stuff they recorded in, I think, 2019, sort of pre-COVID. And, uh, and then Steve Jordan. Yes. On the other- So did Steve Jordan produce the record as well? Or no. He didn't have a... Some other dude produced it who ended up playing some guitars too. There's a few guitar tones you think, hang on, that's not Stonesy, and it's probably the producer. 
But it's yeah, right. I bet it's wall to wall Keith and and Ronnie stuff. It's the guitar sound awesome, man. I think and Mick sounds great. They they sound big. It's interesting with um, it's interesting interesting with Steve Jordan because he's I think he's trying to tip the hat to Charlie Watts in his style, but he just he does go harder on some songs. I love Steve Jordan, and you know he's obviously been around. He played in the. Yeah. He was in the Saturday Night Live. He was in the Blues Brothers band yeah. so early on. Like, he's been around so long. Yeah. And John Mayer Trio. John Mayer Trio. Oh, God, he's just... He's a, I think he's a good fit for the Stones. Yeah, and I had a five-hour drive up here today, so I listened to the new Stones record, and I thought my initial thing was pretty good record. Like, it didn't make me want to skip any tracks. Yeah. And I listened to it right from the end, like, from the beginning to the end. I went, production's good. It doesn't sound... It kind of sounds contemporary as well as being a throwback. Yeah. And occasionally, like, I got lost. The lyrics lost me in some of um, Mick's enunciation, but his phrasing is still... Still the top of his game as far yeah. as phrasing goes. He knows how to that's phrase a, a line that's a good point. Yeah. and fit like in the groove. In there's room for the guitars, and yeah, there was some very left of center Stones guitar tones on that record. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were funky. It was kind yeah. of there was you could hear some kind of what would you call it? Kind of univibey, kind of uh, ambient sort of guitars happen in the background, maybe a Mutron phaser kind of vibes. Mm. Yeah. There's some of that going on. It was really cool. But, yeah, did, were you looking up who the producer was of that record? Yeah, so it's Andrew Watt, no relation to Charlie Watts. Yeah. Um, but young guy, like early 30s. Um, but okay. I hadn't I hadn't read anything about the production of it. I'm, I'm keen to see some interviews and see what people said about the making of it. Um, Because there's a few big stars as well, of course, like McCartney, Stevie Wonder, Lady Gaga, um, do some guest spots. Um, Hmm. That was probably my least favourite track, the Lady Gaga one. Yeah, me too. And she's awesome. I think she's amazing. And Stevie Wonder, of course. But, yeah, I thought that was a weaker one. The gospel thing didn't really suit so much, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, good call. Good call, Rob. So sort of contemporary, sort of stonesy. Um. Yeah, I think it was a it was a good mix. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I thought, yeah, I'm I'm the same as you, exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, Beatles put out a new song. They called it the last Beatles song. Did you guys? Did that get across your screens this now, year? Now and then. Yeah. yeah. It was the, that the documentary the making of it is amazing. It's very interesting when you when you see. The, the how they separate all the instruments and all that stuff and yes. the, that sort of AI kind of stuff that was created by Peter Jackson out of all people. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings, Lord Peter of the Jackson. Rings director, yeah. He created this, or his, not him, but his team, uh, I guess for the Get Back movie, um, they created that. It's amazing. Like the, to me, the technology, just to be able to do that. Mm. Um, and, and how they didn't, they work on it, they started working on the song. During the anthology days, and yeah, during Free as a Bird, during the Free as a that. Bird, yeah, when they did yeah. that, and 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 um, George Harrison did have some guitar parts that he mm. recorded, and then I think Paul McCartney re-recorded this time around. Mm. I don't think they used actual George Harrison's parts, but he wrote the parts, and Paul and Paul McCartney re-recorded them. Oh, okay. okay, but um, yeah, just being able to separate the voice from the the piano and on yeah. an old crappy mono, not even stereo, mono recording. Pretty amazing what they did. And it's not a bad song, actually. No, it's got all the elements there. It's definitely a Beatles song. Yeah. yeah. And there's a bit of humour there. And in the clip, there's a bit of humour. And I love how yes. they did the clip. I, I actually didn't haven't watched the uh, doco part. It's still sitting okay. in my to watch later. Which is kind of like your watch list in Netflix. You tend to never watch anything. Yeah, never. Even- <laughs> it just gets yes, bigger and bigger, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I saw Get Back and um, and the Rick Rubin stuff with McCartney, which you could tell they were already doing all that isolation stuff. Yeah. Yes. That they, the AI yeah. had pulled things out. But is it true that, like, some of the John vocals isn't even John? That's AI generated? Well, I think so because some of it couldn't be... 
Yeah, so, or there uh, wasn't parts. Or there, there wasn't, but yeah, I think they re- re- redid some parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. Well, didn't I think? Did I remember that right? That one of his sons sang some of it. Well, there's an introduction at the beginning, and is that Sean that saying says the thing at the beginning of the track? Like, yeah, it was so good to see like that. My dad and was singing again on a song, and because it because it didn't sound like Julian. I always thought Sean looks and sounds a lot like mm. his dad. Um, but I, I think maybe, I don't remember it exactly, but he may have sung some of the parts okay. or re-sung some of the parts or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. but um, And is Danny Harrison in the doco as well, Gabor? Because I, I think that's him I don't remember seeing the, him, no. I was wondering if that was him in the video. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't rec- recall him being in the doco, no. Okay. Um, I just, I've just discovered he's done a lot of um, film score and television scoring for ages, for mm, he was twenty years or so. He was in on the Sunshine Coast for a lot during COVID, I think. Okay, because um, he you, he kept coming into the uh, local music shop, your music at Noosa, and buying ukulele strings and. Which is funny, like, you know, a bit stereotypical, but, um, yeah, he, he kept coming into the music shop at Noosa. Um, okay. And he, he was here a lot, I think. I don't know if he was stuck here, but um, he seemed to have been around the coast or this area for quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, just looking up now. Yeah, it was Danny Harrison who's in the video okay. and, and performed on the track, yeah. So, cool. um Family affair. Family yeah, affair. Yeah. So, again, you know, it's, it's kind of cool, these – the technology that allows it, and it obviously meant a lot to um, Paul and Ringo to to create to create a new tune as well. So and produced by um, uh, the son George of Martin's son. George Martin Miles yeah. Miles Miles is it Miles Giles Giles, Giles not Miles Giles, Giles Martin. Martin yeah 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 so even that even a production is a family affair so yeah, yeah. that's really cool that's cool. Yeah. All right, I think we're I think we're digging through our list of iconic twenty twenty three things. Um, moving along, and this is a very good suggestion from Rob. Any predictions for twenty twenty four? You're the man with the finger on the pulse. I, I wish I was. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I would have found the pulse by now. But um, boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Um, I, I reckon there will be people buying lots of uh, guitar strings. Um, I think Taylor Swift will make a lot of money doing her tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I wish I knew what the predictions were. Um, it's it's uh, the the 70th anniversary of um, the Fender Stratocaster in 2024. Yes. So I think there will be some Stratocaster-related things happening throughout the year. Um, yeah. But other than that, uh, there's a lot of talk, and I, 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 I even asked our friend at Fender, but no, no response whatsoever. Lots of rumours about a John Frusciante si- uh, signature Strat, really, a la the Mike McCready one. You know okay. that sort of mm. road worn, but but lots of speculations online. Looks like it probably will happen, but no response from uh, from Fender. Okay, <laughs> I asked, I asked, but no response. Um. Which often means maybe more of a yes than a no, but uh, <laughs> because if, if if it was a no, they'd go nah. But if it's a yes, they go well, we can't really say anything, so let's not respond. <laughs> you should make a, a speculation video that we can get outraged at. Why don't they make the signature guitar of the guy I like? Yeah. <laughs> now you're talking. How about more DIY pedals like after the success of Nauticlon oh. by JHS? Ooh, the Ikea Are there going to be thing. more? Because Brian Wampler on um, his podcast, like, I don't know, they were kind of talking about it being okay. a, a good idea. And he's, I don't know if you saw the latest update from Josh, but. They oh, sold they, out instantly. Yeah, and the the amount of units now. There's two. There's three groups of people waiting. You know, pre sales and then post sales, and you know uh, they're wow. just shifting their business uh, to then manufacture more. I heard. I heard the main uh, reason for the holdup is to uh, to low on the goop. 
Oh, the goop. Oh, <laughs> no. They included goop. It's a special goop. It's so funny. Special Dad. goop that they include. He's it's just a genius. He's I've a ma- said it before. He's a marketing genius. Marketing genius. He's yeah. a marketing genius. And the two genius. kids in the video, that yeah. was just like, oh, getting them to put the goop on. He's, he's, a, was, he's a Taylor Swift of the pedal world. world. <laughs> 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 the whole Ikea vibe is awesome yeah. as well. Oh, it's killer. To umlaut the clone. Oh, man. Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. I, think, but it, yep. I think he's selling them directly from JHS, isn't he? So they're yep. not turning up at dealers. No, no, no. no. Which is a little different because he's three series pedal. They, they all went through dealers like everything else. So you could get those in I, Australia. I do like the not a clone till you, till you build it. Yes. <laughs> I always said I would never build a clone clone. So this is not a clone until you build it. <laughs> it's just genius. Yeah, he's, it's like, he's- it's all those, it's all those um, boomers like, uh, well, we're not quite boomers. We're Gen X and Gen Y. But uh, for the ones that missed out on, the model aeroplane thing. Yes. You know, yeah, well, I got yeah, a little yeah. bit of it when I was a kid. Airfix. But, I used to do that. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> punch out the parts from the plastic I used, to, I used to do lots of that. Yeah, and then glue it together. You know, you got glue instead of goop. You can't yes. give kids glue anymore. That's so, true. So, you know, <laughs> it's model aeroplane business went out, you know. And uh, so now this is like our reimagining our childhood by putting pedals together. Yeah. <laughs> Next is next is going to be not another bad monkey, <laughs> <laughs> and it I comes with it. two price. It comes with two price tags. Yeah, you know, like the one pre and you, post. JHS. Yeah, the one before Josh does a video, and the one you know after. Yeah. So you can put the sticker on for the resale so <laughs> when, the, when the price goes up. <laughs> That's it. That's great. I love that. Could happen. <sighs> Could happen. Awesome. I predict Kiss will announce a new. Farewell tour in 2024. That's my is big it, prediction. Is it farewell to the AI, like <laughs> the failure? So they're only going to go around once, or <laughs> their kids should have just like put the makeup on? Yeah, they're well, on... It, it could still happen. They're Who probably knows? already robots anyway. Paul Stanley's son is an amazing singer, oh, and okay. guitar player. Uh-huh. You know, and Gene's son apparently is a freak too. I just haven't dug into his stuff. Yeah, right. But. Um, my prediction is that nickel will all be built, bought up by Tesla for their batteries, and they're going to have to come up with something new for guitar strings. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know okay. if it's going to happen next year, but there is quite a nickel shortage. It continues to be, and but there is one thing I have not looked into, and you know, somebody call in and tell me. Um, but there is different grades of nickel, and there's only the certain grade gets used for the battery, so maybe the junk gets used for guitar strings and frets and whatever else. But it would be interesting because it's something I've been watching the last year is the nickel price and the shortage and yep. how that would impact guitar strings. And is there an alternative on the way? Because there are st- stainless steel guitar strings. But okay. The stainless, stainless steel frets. Frets too, yeah. But and they're more prevalent than stainless steel guitar strings. Uh, but it would be yeah. interesting what happens if there is no nickel. I think they should bring back those rubbery ones that were on the Casio ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for that. Have you seen the Greta Thunberg meme that says, all guitars must be electric by 2025? <laughs> yes. That's yes. so good. I'm on board with that too. I'm on board with all electric yeah. guitars. It's the future. Uh, Gabor will be out of work. No, you can't get rid of hey, acoustic. It's ele- mine's an electric acoustic, oh, okay? A hybrid. Like, you have to hybrid. sell it as it's a, a hybrid. It's a, it's a, it's a pri- <laughs> Prius. It's a Prius of the guitar world. <laughs> or pri- Prius? All right. Here's, here's a, let me back up. Because Talking Heads re-release Stop Making Sense yeah. in cinemas, which I saw as a kid. I okay. was a kid at the Parramatta Village or whatever it was called, the Roxy or whatever. Um, Taylor Swift, Gabor, you were telling me kids who couldn't see Taylor Swift live would go and see the film concert several my, my times. My daughter did, yeah. Maybe that's the next thing. It's sort yeah, of like possibly. AI. It's, sort it's of. more old school than AI. Huh. 
Um, yeah, possibly. well, I went to the cinema this year to watch Eric Clapton's 24 Nights. Oh, yeah. So, yep. but I think they're a long ways off as far as I feel like the sound systems in cinemas aren't really made for music. Okay. And the sound was pretty poor in the cinema when but, I went. But mind you, the, the 13, 14 year old girls yeah. that go and see Taylor Swift, they don't care. They just they yeah. sing along anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> All right, Gabor, yeah, when you're not, you never know. When you're not watching the Taylor Swift film in the theatres out today, um, what are you doing, Gabor? How can people follow your stuff? Not much else. That's pretty much all I do. Uh, I'm bench, a, bench pressing parts casters. But, <laughs> <laughs> getting getting work up. No, well, I, I have I have a YouTube channel uh, and a podcast actually uh, called The Super Fun Awesome Happy Time Pedal Show. Um, and on that, I talk about guitar gear and pedals and amplifiers. Uh, and if you would like to uh, see that, then why not go to the YouTube channel? Uh, links in the description. So, yeah, Super Fun Awesome Happy Done Pedal Show. That's me. Very cool. And, Rob, when you're not losing your guitars on luxury resort islands, <laughs> uh, what are you doing? How can wow, that was, that's an interesting you? spin you put on that one. Yeah. Um, Yes, uh, living happens in the, all the time, you know. Yeah, uh, no, lucky I've got lucky I got sixteen others. The problem leave my guitars and yachts and oh. stuff, you know. <laughs> problem was it was my Dusenberg Mike Campbell, which is oh. the most expensive guitar hey, I have. Hey, so hey. you could yeah, the sweat, like my yes. sweat had sweat. <laughs> so um, yeah, so living in the seventies and living in the eighties is my main gig, and uh, you can find out where we're playing. Uh, at roadtripent.com. Link in the description, mate. That's going to be a nice. big description on this. One. Lots of links big there. Description. All the links. <laughs> All the links. I'm just going to write google.com. <laughs> no, don't you just do at everyone now? At everyone. Isn't that's that new, what everyone does now? That's on Facebook, that's at what everyone does. Really? Everyone. Oh, man, that goes to so all the, that goes to everyone and you who who follows your page. I'm so sorry I got off Facebook earlier this year. I might, I might get back for the ads. Oh, good times. All right, fellas, thank you so much. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Happy, happy Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Gabor. Keep rocking. Keep on rocking.